Now, how many people here use Poodle now or PDAL? A smattering. And how many people say PDAL? Raise your hands. <laughs> and how many people say Poodle? Okay. Now, I just want, I want to point out our logo here. Now, if you look at this, if you haven't noticed it, there's a dog in the, pic, in the icon. There's the head and the, the nose, there's the body, and there's the feet. So lo, the logo says Poodle. I'll probably say Poodle. PDAL is perfectly fine. We accept all pronunciations. Now, now, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it, can you? It is true. OK, so we're going to go over what's new in kind of the Poodle world, the current release of Poodle, um, the COPSI library and format, um, various libraries and software implementing COPSI, and a few pieces of software that kind of use Poodle, use COPSI, are open source, and might be things you haven't heard about since they're kind of new in the last year. Um, the data used in this is all from the Estonian data portal, which is a really, really nice data portal, very complete. Um, it's all LAS 1.4 data with nice horizontal and vertical C SRS. There are some people in here that I know will definitely appreciate very well-defined vertical SRSs, since it's not that common. Uh, it's fully classified data. By classified, I mean it's divided into lighter classes, not secret data. Um, that's something I do work with. Uh, it also has RGB data, so there's actual true color in the uh, point clouds. It's got a good open license. It's not a standard one, but it's a good open license. So this is just an example of one of the uh, tiles from the, the data around TAR2. And you can see it's divided into various um, LIDAR classes. And they have coverage for the entire country, uh, generally collected in like two-year blocks. So it's a pretty good and complete data set. Uh, just another data set that's recently become available, or they've been adding to it, uh, is the IGN France data, um, now in COPSI format. So we'll be going over COPSI in a little bit, but this is a nice data set if you want to look at uh, ready streamable um, data that you can access over the web directly. So kind of what's new in Poodle in uh, the 2.7? We have a new 2.7.2 release as of last Friday. It's, it's a bug fix release and they're generally pretty minor bugs. So if you're running anything 2.7.0 or later, you're probably good. But there might be a few small fixes in there that can help. Um, What's new in the 2.7 branch is we now have a GeoParquet reader and writer. So got to hop on the bandwagon with all the other columnar data formats. So now you can store your point clouds, point clouds in, um, in GeoParquet. It's, um, it's still early days on this, and we'll have to see how well it develops out, but it is available. Uh, Reader's LAS is now multi-threaded. So this is primarily used for LAS decompression. We got uh, updates to the Copic reader for extra dimension support, some new spatial indexing with the H3, um, additional um, capabilities on filter reprojection with Epoch support, although there probably isn't really too much use for that now, but it's kind of will be coming. And some updates to some of the filters. So the, um, the GeoParquet reader and writer are implemented as a plug-in. Um, this is something we'll be doing for a lot more of the kind of more specialized readers and writers or anything that requires um, external libraries, things like that. And I'll talk about this a little bit more when I get to packaging and distribution, uh, specifically Conda. This is a GeoParquet 1.0, so it's not as advanced as the GeoParquet reader in, and writer in um, GDAL, which is now at 1.1 support. So it's Still early days on this, but if you are working with GeoParquet and you do find it has limitations that you're not um, able to achieve, file tickets, create pull requests, we can extend this out, but we just wanted to get it out there to see what the, what the uptake is in the community. But the nice thing out of it, about it is it is directly readable right now in DuckDB. 
So here's an example of reading a remote GeoParquet point cloud in DuckDB uh, filtering by an attribute. So you can do these things for you know, various machine learning and uh, AI pipelines right now. But there's still a lot of needs um, that it doesn't support. There's no spatial indexing, no spatial hierarchy. Um, the storage doesn't really con correspond to the hierarchy. Um, the geometry storage is well-known binary, uh, not using a, a higher-end structs that would uh, be more compressible. And there's no uh, row group metadata. So it's hard to, to, to really get access to subsets. It'll depend on how you've written your GeoParquet formats. The threaded reader class is just kind of a nice performance boost. Um, this will now use multiple threads to decompress the LAS chunks. Um, if it's a remote data set, it'll fetch it in multiple chunks. So it's just, it, right now it uh, defaults to seven. I'm not quite sure why seven was picked. I think it was probably just, you know, trial and error and finding which one kind of performs the best for limiting amount of memory and uh, network access, but it is settable via arguments. So if you do need to control that, you can. The filters expressions uh, and assigns now take direct mass support. So this is one thing that you oftentimes had to use um, Python for. If you wanted to do complex math expressions in your assignments, um, you're doing height above ground or scaling RGB or doing other things like that. Now you can do that directly in the filter assignments. And um, you can also directly assign new dimension names. So you, before you had to use the filters ferry to create a new dimension name and then assign it with a sign or use an expression. Now you can just do that directly and it'll create the, the new dimensions on the fly. Uh, like I said, we have extra dimension support in writers.copic or copsy. Uh, this is useful for a variety of different types of data sets. When you have height above ground, you have specialized metrics from forestry, you have, in this case of ISAT data, you have extra noise parameters that you need to filter out that are stored as extra dimensions. Um, but be aware because it can really bloat the size of your data, these extra dimensions. Since they're outside the normal LAS schema, they don't compress nearly as well. And it also won't be part of the, um, of the hierarchy and the COPSI data. So if you really need to filter on that, you're gonna have to read through the whole data set to filter on the extra dimensions. We do have now H3 support if you need other kinds of spatial indexing. Um, this was, could be useful in the GeoParquet. Um, you can at, assign the um, spatial index as an, as an at, extra attribute and store it that way. So now you can filter at the, at the dimension level um, to get to a certain spatial resolution but it does have to be calculatable to geodetic. So if your projection is not convertible to 4326, you won't be able to calculate an H3 dimension because that's how it's stored. How do you get Poodle? Like most things, you can get the source uh, code. It's MIT licensed. It's very, very broad. Um, you can pretty much do what you want with it. We have, we maintain a variety of Docker containers in multiple different um, uh, formats for ARM and x86. We have um, a Lambda repo for building Poodle in Lambda. And if you're going to be doing the, uh, Poodle in Lambda, um, it also contains GDAL since that's one of the things that uh, Poodle is based on. So you also have a GDAL Lambda. Although if you're going to just be doing GDAL, you probably want one of the other GDAL Lambdas since it'll be smaller not having the Poodle stuff compiled in. And our primary distribution method for Poodle now is, or PDAL, is Conda Forge. Um, we have a well-established Conda Forge recipe. It builds for Windows, Linux, Mac, on both x86 and ARM. So this is, we'll probably, we'll be keeping this up to date, but we are undergo, undergoing a reorganization of how the library is organized. So there'll be a lib Poodle core, and then each plugin will be uh, an extra uh, install through Conda, so you'll be able to have much smaller installations if you don't want all the various plugins. And this is similar to what's happening to GDAL right now in Conda. There's going to be a libgdal core 
and a lot of libgdl plugins, like was started with Parquet, but now is extending to a lot of more of the uh, more specialized formats. Copsy is a format we reintroduced, I think two years now, and it's seen some pretty good uptake. It's our attempt to make uh, analysis ready data for point clouds, being able to do range reads for the point cloud data and just get access to what the data you need. Um, like COG, it's, it is still just an LAZ file, so if your software is not COPSI aware, it works just fine. But if it is COPSI aware, it can use the higher level capabilities of being able to read just to the depth that you need or the spatial area that you need. But it is portable, so it is just an LAZ file. EPT stores this hierarchy. It's 10,000, 100,000 files, depending on how big your area is. Here it's just a single file. And this uptake has been pretty good, so there are many different software implementations out there of COPSI or COPIC. Both pronunciations are acceptable. We have a, a hard time coming up with acronyms that are not unambiguous in terms of their pronunciations. So Untwine is an alternative way of generating COPSI data. Um, Untwine approaches things in a different order than Poodle does. It writes to disk and organizes things that way, so it's very light in terms of memory, but uses disk to, re to reorganize because you have to sort the points when you're uh, recomputing the spatial index. Poodle does that in memory, so depending on your use case, you may want to write some things one way with Untwine, you may want to write some things with Poodle, depending on how your memory situation is. QGIS, for example, uses Untwine to uh, generate COPSI. And QGIS is one of the, the you know, forefront implementations of, of COPSI. Uh, there's JavaScript libraries for COPSI, there's Python libraries with LASPy, there's Rust implementation with COPSI RS, and a number of software packages have implemented COPSI read support. Like I said, QGIS is kind of a showcase for COPSI. When you load point cloud data of LAS, LAZ into uh, QGIS, it is automatically converted to COPSI using Untwine. Um, the reason they use uh, Untwine is to save memory, obviously. Just to note that Untwine is licensed differently than uh, Poodle. It's not BSD or MIT, it is GPLv3. There has been tremendous amounts of uptake of point cloud support in, Copic, in uh, QGIS, and I think you have a session later today at two o'clock that going over, oh. there, is a, there is a session at two o'clock going over a lot of the point cloud uh, support in uh, QGIS. So you, if, you're inter if you're using QGIS and you should be using QGIS, that is a talk you should be attending. Uh, supports 2D and 3D viewing by classification, by range, by RGB, just about anything you can think of. So here's some TAR2 data in QGIS, looking at it in both 2D and 3D. Um, this is just filtered, so it's showing um, high vegetation and buildings. And here's an example looking at the RGB data. So it's, it's really nice when you can do 3D visualization with RGB data directly in the point clouds. QGIS has now added the ability to render point clouds as a hillshade directly. Um, you, can, you can still do the conversion to a raster if you need to, but this is an on-the-fly rendering of the point cloud data as a, as a service, and it works really, really well. They've now added point cloud processing to QGIS, and this is through the Poodle Wrench application. Uh, Poodle Wrench is a command line routine um, package that's installable via Conda or built into QGIS. And it does point cloud processing using Poodle, but runs, does it in a multi-threaded fashion. So some operations that you can do with Poodle Wrench, you don't have to control the, um, the threading and the processing like you would at, at the Poodle level where you're on your own. We control um, parallelization in Poodle at the process level. It's up to you to run things in parallel. 
Poodle Wrench will do that for you. So there's a variety of routines that do run things in parallel once you've uh, converted your data set to what's called a virtual point cloud or VPC. VPCs are basically JSON files, uh, a virtual collection of your point clouds. They're formatted using the stack API item collection and it's built right into QGIS so you can select 10,000 point clouds in QGIS and use the tool to convert right to a VPC. And you can see that as a VPC, a lot of these things are supported with, um, oops, let me go back, multi-threaded or per file spatial tiling. So these will operate in parallel and you do have some control over the amount of parallelization that will happen. Will happen. So here's the export to raster that I did in QGIS from the VPC and it ran in parallel. This was, I think, 15 or 20 point clouds, and it converted to a raster in 20.75 seconds running in parallel. So it's actually really performant and works quite well. And there's an example of what that uh, raster uh, looks like, adding, a, adding it twice as a hill shade and the elevation. A new package that's recently been uh, developed for a couple of clients that we've put into the open source is called Silvametric. It's uh, designed around doing a lot of forestry calculations, height above ground, a lot of the soil metrics, other things like that that you can get out of point clouds. And it uses uh, TileDB to store a lot of that information. So this is not a package that I've actually personally used. So I'd like to get some feedback on it, but it's something uh, Howard developed for some forestry clients and it's uh, available out there now um, at silvametric.com. It's a Apache 2.0 license, and so if you're doing forestry work or a lot of the metrics work, this might be an interesting package for you. We have an ambient inclusion um, release software that uh, will calculate the time and daylight using white box tools for point cloud data, and then uses uh, matplotlib with Poodle to generate an output. And it generates a really kind of nice two-dimensional but 3D-ish view of your, um, of your data with, you know, using the sun angle and uh, this does have to be active sensor LIDAR. If you don't have multiple returns, it's kind of hard to calculate this because it does separate it onto bare earth, but it generates a nice output that a lot of people find uh, useful. And then we also have a registration package out there now that's open source. This was uh, developed in collaboration with the uh, University of Houston and the Center for uh, Aerial LiDAR Mapping. And it's, um, it works for beyond point clouds, point cloud, mesh, raster, um, and can register one data set to another set. Um, one thing is though, you, it does do course registration using feature matching. So if you're using a we had one user do this. Using a DTM as your source of truth, you're not gonna find a lot of features in a terrain model because it's, all the features are removed from the terrain model. So it's not a good source for your registration. So here's an example where we have a uh, PLY mesh and a, a point cloud and running um, the software against this, it will do the automated feature matching and then also do the iterative close, closest point matching to do a fine registration and then apply that back to the PLY. And we end up getting uh, our, our mesh closely aligned to our point cloud. And you can do this across a variety of different uh, modalities. So mesh to dem, dem to point cloud, point cloud to mesh, whatever you wanna do. And this is available now, um, thank you. and it's uh, available in a Apache 2.0 license. So, Check it out if you have uh, registration issues, other things like that, where you have drone collected LIDAR, all kinds of things like that. It's a useful package, and it is being integrated into Open Drone Map as well. And I think we have time for questions. Oh, thank you. <laughs> There's usually a slide saying that, but thank you. Uh, so questions? Yeah. <laughs> 
You're not allowed to ask, ask questions. <laughs> Th thanks for the nice overview. Um, I had a question that I couldn't answer in my workshop, and you might be able to, to answer okay. that. Sorry. Oh, great. Put me on the spot now. <laughs> yeah. There was a question from a participant about datum transformations. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you support that with Poodle? We do. So that, that's something that Proj supports. And because uh, Poodle impl implements Proj, it supports datum transformations. You have to have the datum shift files available, but those are available through Proj network now. Um, if you have a network connection, you can sync those um, datum connections down if you don't have a network connection ahead of time. Um, we have to do this on our classified network, so we take all the datum translations with us. But it does work both 2D, 2D to 2D and, 2, and 3D to 3D. If you have the datums. <laughs> it's not a question, but uh, there is a QGIS processing tool for that as well. Yes. Good point. Okay, more questions or maybe remarks? Okay, I think that was it. Thank you okay. very much, Mike. Thank you. Mm -hmm.